All right, guys, I'm working on a whisker pole. Tammy's working on a reel. <laughs> She's making something for y'all. I'm making something for y'all too. Uh, so my line here, my line here has shredded and it hooks to the end of this, which goes inside the pole right there. Comes down. Hello. And around this pulley, through this little cam cleat, and back up to this end, and gets tied off right here. I have my punch and my hammer grips. See if I can get this through, first of all, with the tape on it. There we go. Now, let's tie a stopper knot in it. Theoretically, that should hold. Now I gotta get the right length. This whisker pole was on our boat when we bought her, but Todd's pretty sure that it's too small. We've had trouble figuring out exactly what size we should have, and they're pretty expensive. So for now, we'll keep using it in light winds. We don't put it out at night or in heavier weather. Let's see if I can find some kind of a thimble that I can put over this wire cable. Rigging stuff. Uh, something like that won't work. I have a ring, but I'd have to cut the cable first. I have one of these. This might work. I don't know what size that is. It doesn't tell me what size that is. This one here's a little bigger. The little guy I think is gonna to be too small. I might get away with it. But this one, this one fits better like that. What you doing, babe? Splicing. Are you the president splicer? I am, but it's been like two years since I've done it, so I'm having to watch a video to remember what I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta get the core out of here. Mm. Hey, you know what I just did that I'm super proud of? Okay, I spliced this and then whipped it. It's not super pretty, but it's strong and it'll work. And those are my tools. Are you all done? Yeah, that's the whipping. It needs to be flame throwed. You're gonna flame Fla flame throwed. Yeah, use flame th flame flame flamethrower. Flame <laughs> How come I can't see it? Because it's a super hot butane torch thing. <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself. Yeah, that's probably good. You don't want to melt your whipping. <laughs> flame throwed. I like that. That's a new term. After you whip it, make sure you flamethrow it. <laughs> Looks pretty good. It's strangely satisfying. I don't know why I like doing it, but it's fun. Do you like splicing, sewing, crocheting? Like, do you do anything like that? All right, this is where we're at. Isn't this beautiful? It's finally warmed up. It's gonna be like 80 degrees. We're taking care of the last few projects and planning our trip north along the east coast of the United States before it really gets warm around here. We're so close to being done. Guys, if you have a hydraulic um, 
steering on your boat. I highly recommend you get some of these. All right, so I got a cap and that insert plug. There's a couple of them here, different sizes. Um, but the idea behind these is that when you pull your hose apart, you can cap it, cap it there, and you can cap it here. That keeps most of your fluid from leaking out where you don't want it to leak out. <laughs> so you can work on the system. Um, these were not bad. They were just dripping, but they probably would have dripped for an hour or more. And so rather than having a mess down there, I plugged them. This is what happens when the puppy wants to come in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so in order to take apart the hydraulic ram, you're gonna have to take an old socket and you're gonna have to create a custom little tool that looks something like this. So you're gonna cut the sides back. You're gonna leave two little tits on the end. And they're gonna go in here. And you can see it's a screw but it's got two recess points like that. And that's where that little socket thing goes into. All right, so you can see, this is what that little nut looks like. It goes on the end of these rods. And this is my little socket thing. And so those fit right there. Our hydraulic ram has been leaking since we got the boat, but it has finally gotten bad enough to require a rebuild. Todd found videos online that helped him, and the seal kit came with instructions, including how to make that nifty tool. We have a Hyanotic brand hydraulic ram, and we purchased the rebuild kit from Seastar. We can't go anywhere without our sails on. They've been off since we left her for hurricane season nearly a year ago. How can I help? Yeah, well, you can help by going on the other side and standing on the other side and helping maneuver this around. We have a ton of pollen all over the boat. Higher. Right about there. Go ahead and sweep that off. We want to take a minute and say a special thank you to our patrons. You guys have been so amazing through our grief this past year. We really appreciate it. We love chatting with you on Zoom and in our text messages, and we love hearing what's happening in your lives. It's been such a special treat. Thanks for being so great. North Carolina has a rich history, and we did take some time to do a little exploring while we were here. The pirate Blackbeard's ship sank off the coast nearby, and Beaufort has a great museum on the nautical history of the area. We're opening up all the different cushions that we have, total mismatched stuff, and making them fit right and recovering them. So is that my butcher knife? It's a cushion knife. <laughs> Today it's Sometimes a cushion knife. Sometimes we use it for food. <laughs> The cushions we've been using were salvaged off of several different boats in the boatyard six years ago. They've never fit right and were three different colors. This is going to be a nice change. About time we get some covering on our cushions. Make them, at least they'll be the same color, right dear? Yeah. <laughs> cushions. 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 Mostly done. Doing? Well, our bridle has chafed through right here. One of its three strands and one of the strands is completely chafed through. So we are taking it apart and putting it back together again a little shorter. They're not cheap to buy. This is a mantis bridle. Um, but looking it up on 
the internet on Google on how to splice with a three strand rope. It's not that complicated. And I have taken all the measurements of how they did it. They did 15 inches of splice. So it's tucked back in 15 inches. So we're just gonna cut it back on both sides so that it's the same length on both legs and fix it. I've cut off a whole Ooh. chunk of it. Well, that includes the 15 inches that went inside. But, yeah, so we've lost about a foot and a half of length overall. About that much. Right. Because that all got wolf down inside. Yeah. So I basically cut off the loop. Yeah. Well, you're still, you have to add that 15 inches into what you cut off because it's got to be buried. So. Well, that's, this part gets buried. Yeah. And we wanted to put chafe protection on this this time, right? Yeah, we're gonna try it because if we leave it loose, we can inspect the fibers and we can always cut it off if it's not working. Well, this, you know, this time, I mean, that only really lasted us one full season, like yeah. about eight months before it chafed through. Well, and it's chafing through because our hose holes are, yeah, um, it's, our it's fair our leads, I guess, are so. Um, they got grooves worn into them from so many years. <laughs> Forty years worth of grooves. So it's it's our boat's fault, not not the product. <laughs> All right, we've added some chafe protection so we don't have that problem again, and we have put this all together. Whoop whoop! That was not hard, but it was hard. So it was not complicated, but my fingers are really sore from putting that together. But, one more side to go. Did it! Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so, if you are not a boater, what this does is tie to cleats on the boat and then extends out to the chain. It hooks on the chain and keeps it from shock loading to the anchor. So it's called a bridle. It's project countdown, and now we've remarked our chain every 25 feet with spray paint. We use the colors green, yellow, blue, and red, with the mnemonic, get your boat ready, to remember the order that they're in. After the first 100 feet, there are two strips of each color. This is Hurricane Boatyard in Bayboro, North Carolina. The access up the Bay River is a little shallow, especially during a southwest wind, but generally we had seven feet of water. Their docks are comfortable with power and water. Their lift handled us just fine and can accommodate smaller catamarans up to 22 feet wide. They have a small chandlery and accept packages in the office. They have a washer and dryer in the laundry room and two bathrooms with showers. Well, have you enjoyed it here? I have, actually. I think it's the uh, most enjoyable boatyard I've ever been in. I've only been in two. But the first one was okay for a while, and then at the end it wasn't. So, But this one's been okay the whole time. Yep. <laughs> We've had a really good time here at Hurricane Boatyard. They've been really good to us, and compared to what we had in Texas, this place has been a joy. And the people are great. The people in the yard working on their boats have been amazing. We've just really, really enjoyed our time here. This has been a great experience, especially compared to our first boat yard. Like Todd said, that one was a little rough. We were told that this place was a little rough. They didn't know what we had experienced previously. Nope. <laughs> it's a really nice no. place. It's a DIY yard. So they let you do all your own work. They don't get in your business about what you're doing. Um, it's really affordable. That's why we're here. Just had a really great time getting to know everybody. Yeah, there's been a lot of people in the boat yard here working on their boats that we've got to know. It's been a lot of fun getting to know them and we help them, they help us, you know, it's yeah. great. It's been awesome.